For me, over these last uh, few months, I've been really taken into the book of Psalms. And I found uh, one Psalm particularly helpful. Uh, that would be Psalm 23. And just the imagery of God being our shepherd and to recognize that um, he is with us, that he's leading us through this time. I think in these moments of crisis, uh, what's so important for us is to have good voice recognition. And there's so many voices that are seeking to speak into this moment, lots of loud voices that maybe we don't really want to hear. And so to recognize that Jesus is the good shepherd. So for me, what God wants us to, to deepen is that level of trust. And so how we express our worship of him is to know that we can trust him in this moment and as we move out of this moment. We, we've had a, a rhythm of daily prayer as a church uh, where for, uh, at 9 a.m., 12 noon, 7 p.m., we've stopped, we've paused to pray. Um, we've done that on a live stream. We've just used Facebook Live. Um, and, and I think in terms of our worship, um, sometimes we can we can think about worship as this sort of one-off event that maybe we do on a Sunday or or, or it becomes a something we do in a, in, in a big context but actually I think it's the daily rhythms of worship those moments of, of connectivity to God recognizing that his presence is where he wants us to live in and from times of solitude times of quiet rhythms of reading the scriptures um, and also more recently just getting out there into God's creation um, over the summer we've got a, a little theme going as a church called summer adventures with God and just getting out into the creation uh, God's world um, and just enjoying him for for what he's done who he is what is around us has been really key too I was reading uh, I think it's Jeremiah 16 which talks about the crossroads and the ancient paths and and actually some of the new paths that God is, is sort of raising up or, or actually the ancient paths the paths that that are about um, contemplation uh, are about quietening and slowing down the role of the minister becomes much more of a coach type role somebody who's trying to equip and to enable the congregation that the, the people who are following Jesus to get hold of their own rhythms their own expressions of worship of discipleship all of us have access to God all of us are filled with God's Spirit and we don't necessarily need others to lead us into that and we can lead ourselves into that that's what I would feel God is, is really encouraging us to, to, to do together We've, we've really struggled, if we're honest, to make disciples who make disciples. And I think if we, if we get into that habit of making disciples who make disciples, then yes, we will then get into evangelism. Um, but evangelism is only a part of God's mission. I think that, and then I think there's like the, the big picture stuff where I think right now there's, there's definitely stuff that God is talking about I guess justice issues and and for me I wanting to engage in, in the whole uh, racial injustice concept and seeing justice social justice is, is just a part of the kingdom of God um, and something that we need to embrace perhaps in a new way sometimes we worry don't we about the, the level of darkness in our world but what God is looking for is the quality and quantity of the light and I think if we can get the quantity and the quality of the light to be brighter and sharper, um, those who are living in darkness will see that much more clearly. So missional communities, um, for me, is really an extended sense of family on mission together. It's missional, therefore it has a, a focus something that they feel God has called them to do, a group of people to reach, um, an area to inhabit as the people of God. It's also community. 
It's a place of belonging. It's a place where you find friendship. It's a place where everybody knows your name. Um, if you put those two together, um, then you have a, a context, a, a sort of social space. Um, and it can be anything from, from 12 to 30, ideally, but a little bit. It can be smaller, it can be larger. That is a space, a social space, where you can invite people in to belong, to journey, to develop uh, uh, their own faith. I, th I think missional communities also, um, they're, they're small enough to care and they're large enough to dare. Um, that ability to be agile, flexible, is going to be so important. I, I'm, I'm convinced in my heart that, that this sort of COVID moment won't be the last moment that we have some sort of crisis. And, and, and I think just the way that we live life, the way that the world, the globalization, I think there will be other things that will come up. Um, and, and we'll need a church that is flexible, that is agile, that can respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying. I think missional communities can do that. I definitely feel like God is saying, lean into the scattered, lean into the missional community world, because I think it's in that environment that we'll see him at work, perhaps in a way that we haven't. For me, I think COVID-19 has presented us with a real opportunity to stop and to maybe reset how we do church. Um, I think we can, it's, it's a real moment to, to innovate and to imagine church being done differently. We, we're just saying, actually, we're not going to go back to normal um, because, A, we don't want to go back. <laughs> That's not the right language, is it? We want to go forward. Um, and actually, what is normal? Um, if normal was the fact that we weren't really seeing the kingdom of God come in the way that I think the, old, the New Testament gives us that inspiration and, and that vision for then it's like, well, maybe this is a moment to do it differently. I think, I think that's where we need, um, we need friendships, we need networks. I think, I think the future of the church in a bigger context is, is gonna be much more around relationship and around networks. Um, and, and so for me, being in a couple of key networks, Fresh Streams is obviously one key network. It's, I have the privilege of helping to lead that. Um, but also I'm connected to another one called Kairos Connection. And, and both those networks give me environments to find courage. Um, we need to be braver in this moment. Um, but but we, we, we need to find people around us who are also saying, I'm having a go as well. I would recognize that I think the next six to 12 months are going to be some of the most challenging months for anybody in church leadership. There's a level of uncertainty that we've not lived with ever. And therefore we need to find friendship. We need to find networks of, of leaders that we can journey with. Um, I think it's time for us to become that radical Baptist movement that, that, that was in our DNA when we started. Um, that's the challenge. I would love us to really embrace the fact that we are radicals. And for a few years now, I've had on my heart the word synergy and the way that we can create synergy as a Baptist family. Um, synergy is that ability, isn't it, for, for, for one or two, two or more organizations or to, to, to get together, but the net result is more than. So it's not two plus two plus equals four, it's two plus two equals 20. There's, there's some sort of energy that's created in synergy. And um, I, I've long, I long to see us build relationally, um, first and foremost. 
and to really give ourselves to building good, strong relationships. And I think if we can find those, those environments where we're running together, those of us who are the Abrahams, those of us who are the Isaacs, those of us who are the Jacobs, to run together because God is a generational, intergenerational God. And I'd love to see the Baptist family um, and Fresh Dreams to be playing its part in that, to, to, to run together. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you're in your 50s or your 30s or even in your late, uh, late teens, we can be running together um, and making space for one another. Um, and, it, and it's not so much about succession, um, it's about being in this together. But what I long for is for us as Baptists to take our part and play our role alongside everybody else. But I think God wants to do something in us and through us where we are uniquely positioned because of some of our Baptistic theology and practice that could enable us to be one of the vehicles that God moves through by his spirit in this post-COVID world where his kingdom comes, the Holy Spirit is poured out afresh on the nation and we see hundreds of men, women, boys and girls come to know Jesus Christ for themselves.